Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. Recently, a fun problem has been making headlines and making the rounds. KidSpot says, Internet stumped by impossible year two maths question. Tyla's headline is people left confused after mom shares impossible math question for seven-year-olds. And Scoop Upworthy says a second grade student's math question completely baffles her mother and the internet. So what was this question? Stretch your thinking. Write an addition equation. The equation must have a one, a two, and a three digit add end and use all of these digits. 66228800. This was posted on Reddit Ask Math and the mom says, I am so stuck. This is probably so easy but after an hour, I'm at my wit's end. Second grade, please help this mama out. So what is the answer? Pause the video if you'd like to give this problem a try. And when you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve this problem. Before I get into working out the problem, I really wanna compliment the person who tried this question. The comment states they tried for one whole hour to figure it out. Then they got stuck. This is a lot longer than most students are going to attempt a problem or most adults would attempt a problem. Most people just read the question and say, well, it's too hard. As long as you give a valid attempt, it's okay if you can't figure it out. You can then ask for help. That's what will make the results satisfying is if you give it a try and then you see how to actually solve it. So now let's tackle the problem. So I think one of the issues in this question is you're supposed to write the answer in a straight line sentence. Now I think this is going to be a little bit of a problem because the question will actually be easier if you write the addition problem in columns. So let me explain what this is about. So let's go through the question line by line. You need to write an addition equation. So this can be expressed in different ways. It can be term plus term is equal to sum, sum and plus sum and is equal to sum, add end plus add end is equal to sum, or aug end plus add end is equal to sum. But I think instead of writing this equation in a straight line like this, it would be better to write it in column form. That way you have the ones, the tens, and the hundreds, and it'll be easier to see where the sums go. The equation must have a one, a two, and a three digit add end. So we have a one digit add end, then we have a two digit add end, and then we have a three digit add end. Now what will the resulting sum be? The resulting sum has to use all of these digits. So how many digits are there? Here's a neat little trick. If you need to count a lot of numbers, you can split them up into groups of three or four. So here we have three, three, and three. Three groups of three makes nine. So we have a total of nine digits. How many digits have we already used? We've already used one, two, three. One plus two plus three is equal to six. So we need to get nine minus six, which equals three more digits. So the resulting sum has to be three digits. Now we have the setup for this question. So we have the digits 6622888 and 000. So let's go ahead and try to substitute these into the boxes. So we might as well just start with some guesses. Well, let's look at the hundreds column. So here we have the hundreds column and we have a three digit number just above it. So let's imagine we just have the same number in both of these boxes. We don't have any carryover from the tens column. So six and six are the first two numbers. So let's just go ahead and substitute those in. We'll put six in one box and six in the other box. So this is just a guess. It may not lead to an answer, but we'll just get started with something. Now let's look at the tens column. We have something plus something is a result. So the next number is two. What if we just had two plus zero is equal to two, assuming we had no carryover from the ones column. So we can substitute those in. So let's go two plus zero is equal to two. Finally, we look at the ones column here and we have three things being added to result in a number and we have to substitute eight, eight, zero, and zero. So what if we try eight plus zero plus zero is equal to eight? Now, when we substitute these in, 
we're going to get the right sum in this ones column. And of course, we're going to end up with something that is a valid equation. We have 8 plus 20 plus 600 is equal to 628. This is probably the intended answer to this type of question for second grade students who are approximately seven years old. This solution would demonstrate an understanding of the place value system. But a mathematician is never satisfied with just finding an answer. A mathematician would wonder, what are the other possibilities? How else could a student have presented the answer? So let's try and think about other ways that we could have come up with an answer. This is an exercise to stretch your thinking. So what would happen if we rearrange some of these digits? Imagine we rearrange this eight and the zero in the ones column. Well, of course, we're not going to change the resulting sum. So this new arrangement will also be an answer. Zero plus 28 plus 600 is equal to 628. But we could also move the eight down to this third number so that we have zero plus 20 plus 608 is equal to 628. Now, if we go back to the beginning, we could also switch some of the non-zero numbers. What would happen if we switch this two and eight? We would also have to switch it in the resulting sum. But if we do that, we would end up with another solution. Two plus 80 plus 600 is equal to 682. So let's just go through some of the ways we could permute the non-zero digits. We could also switch the six and the eight. So we would end up with two plus 60 plus 800 is equal to 862. Now the six and the two can be switched. So in this transposition, we have six plus 20 plus 800 is 826. Now switch the eight and the two. So we end up with another solution. Then let's switch the eight and the six. And again, you'll find a solution. Now let's just switch the six and two and go back to where we started. So if we count up all these possibilities, we're going to end up with 18 different possible answers. So there are probably 18 different ways you could say you could solve this problem. But what if we were to stretch our thinking? Are there any other possible answers? What if we allowed leading zeros? So let's say we switch this two and the zero in the tens column. So we have eight plus double zero plus 620 is equal to 628. Now it's up to you whether you think double zero is a two digit number or not. But if you were to consider this possibility, how many more solutions would you end up with? I count a total of six possible solutions. Something like eight plus double zero plus 620 is equal to 628. And then the various ways we could rearrange the non-zero digits. But what if we were to switch the eight and the zero here so that we have zero plus zero eight plus 620 is equal to 628. We would end up with six more solutions along these lines, but we're not done yet. We could also move the eight down one more time. So if we move it over here, I would say we have something of a trivial solution. We have zero plus double zero plus 628 is equal to 628. Well, that's not that interesting. But if we are to think creatively, we would want to consider all possible cases. Now, if we allow leading zeros, there is another case that I think is slightly interesting. You could have something like 66 plus 22 is equal to 88 because six plus two is equal to eight. So this makes use of a fact that we're not just adding zero to each digit. So we have zero plus 66 plus zero 22 is equal to zero 88. So if you allow 0, 88 to be a solution, we would have other different ways that we could permute the digits. We would end up with 12 different possibilities along these lines. But now, are these all of the solutions? So no matter how carefully I think I counted them, it's always good to check things by computer program if I can. So let's go back to the beginning. We have a total of nine digits here, so nine digits could be arranged in nine factorial ways. But some of the digits are duplicates. So we have two sixes, which are non-distinguishable or identical to each other. So we need to divide this by two factorial. Then we have two digits of two. So we need to divide it by two factorial again. 
then we have two digits of eight, so we divide by two factorial, and finally we have three digits of zero, so we divide by three factorial, and this will give a total of 7,560 possibilities. So I went ahead and programmed all of these different permutations, and you can substitute them into the box and actually just see which of these possibilities lead to different solutions. So by my count, there are a total of 48 solutions, which are shown in the video, but perhaps there is a creative way to solve this problem that I didn't think about. So here are all of the different solutions I came up with, but maybe you will come up with something more creative. Perhaps you could flip the six around to be a nine. Who knows which way you will think about stretching your thinking to find the answer. Just as we stretch our muscles and work our muscles out every day in the physical world, it's always good to do the same thing in the mental world. Thanks for sharing this challenge with me. And it's such a fun and interesting question. I'm glad the students today have a chance to work out creatively in math class. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems one video at a time.